drop <laughs> everything, <laughs> okay? All right, let's get to it because did y'all catch the Golden Bachelor last night? If not, we've got you covered. But first, this is an official spoiler alert, okay? Nobody getting upset with us yes. on X, all right? During a pickleball battle for Gary's affection, it came out that Sandra was missing her daughter's wedding that day to compete for Gary's heart. Well, Gary pulled her aside and insisted on a joint FaceTime call to her newlywed daughter and groom. Now, it all paid off. I guess, because Sandra got an early rose, but some fans weren't so pleased with her decision. One wrote, sorry, did Sandra just say that she's here for the silly television program instead of being at her daughter's wedding? The silly television show you're watching? The shade, <laughs> the shade, watching, but not participating in. So um, how are y'all feeling about this? Now, Steph, you're engaged. Yes. Is there any circumstance where it would be okay for your mother to miss your wedding? I mean, if, if, I would personally really want her to be there, but obviously if she's sick or something, then obviously. What if she's, on, what if she's on a big TV show? I, I would think that was, I would, if it was a pre-discussed, we went through it as to the reasons why. I mean, I wouldn't love it, but I would respect her wishes if it was something that she was really dying to do. You know, I think, oh, but I, I, mean, be, I would be best pleased. You're allowed, you would be allowed to be, to feel some type of way about that. Is this something that you think you would hold on to or you would? Be I wouldn't hurt hold a little on bit to it. No, 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 no. I don't hold on to anything. No, 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 no. Like I, once it's been aired, once it's been discussed, I'm done. I'm fine. That's your decision. It's your. You do what, what you want to do. But I wouldn't. I would be a bit disappointed. I'll be honest. Like That's honest, I would yeah. want my mom there. Like yeah. it's a big day. It's I personally, I'm here moment. for it. You like it? I, I, I like it. And I'll tell you why. I think, uh, you know, I'm a parent, but we we're kind of parents that still do stuff. Parents from especially Sandra's generation, they were all about the kids all the time. Mm -hmm. We talk about it now where th there's mothers from this generation that still feel shame because they grew up with mothers from the previous generation and they were 100% dedicated to their kids. So if Eric or Sam or somebody goes to Vegas, they're like, I'm a bad mom, my kid has. It's like, you're a human being too. And this yeah. is, you have to like live your life. You gave birth to these people, you raised them with the flu, broken arms, getting them ready for prom. Go have your day. That's what I'm saying. Like, do you, it if can't it, always be about everybody else. Is, I mean, I, I mean, it's one thing. Like you said, go have your day. Absolutely, but it's your daughter's wedding. Yeah, well, chances are it's there, not going to work. There's some context <laughs> to your because when they FaceTimed, which was hilarious, because I felt like I was watching my parents uh, figure out FaceTime. They're like, well, I think Aww. you do this. I did, you know, whatever. Um, but it did appear like maybe this was a very casual event. Not to say that that's not still important because it's a wedding or, it's, you know, they're getting married, but maybe it was a situation where they got married at the courthouse and they're doing something bigger, but we didn't hear about that because uh -huh. that doesn't sound as dramatic. But when they FaceTimed, she was like, oh, we did it, but they weren't like, she wasn't like dressed in a big white gown or anything oh, like see, that. So I context. kind of felt like yeah. maybe it was something a little bit more casual. But Sandra, I got to give her props because she went all out during pickleball, like saved the ball, like fell into the crowd. <laughs> she was going for it. She even ate ice cream and she's lactose intolerant, which made her miss the rose ceremony. Oh. But she did get her rose. So way to go, Sandra. Yes. Way to go. He slid she into was the door. ashamed into giving, yeah. getting that rose. Yeah. 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 What's he supposed to do? You missed your daughter's wedding? Well, here's the famous rose. Yeah. 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 Sandra's hilarious. We love Sandra. All right, all right. All right, let's talk about Martha Stewart because she's getting real about age appropriate fashion. During a recent event, she was asked about dressing for one age. Well, Martha said she's dressed the same since she was 17 and said, quote, dressing for whose age? I don't think about age. I think people are more and more fabulous than they've ever been in their senior years. I got to agree with that, Martha. If you take a look at Martha's Instagram, you can see the looks she's been rocking recently. So what do you all think about these age appropriate looks or does that even matter anymore? Al Fashion Jackson. I, I want to get Jeff's opinion on this, but I'll say there. Uh, I thought her looks in that picture were so dope. Those are yeah. perfectly age appropriate. But I will say I do find an issue and we've all, you ever been like, 
you know, some of you're like uh, having drinks down at the, in Tallahassee and there's like a mother daughter and they're both dressed the same with cowboy hats. And, you, and it looks like, yeah, it's gross because <laughs> it looks it's like gross. you're trying to look like yeah, your daughter. It's, embarrassing. it's super weird. I don't like when you're trying to look like a college Maybe the student. daughter's trying to look like the mom. Erica, you don't where is that, that ever? When's that ever happen? It happens <laughs> a lot, you especially when your mother is very fashion savvy. I have a lot of friends who, and my mom's like, wait a minute, what about me? Um, but I have a lot of friends who have mothers who are very fashionable. My mother, yeah. Are like that they shop their mother's closets. So right. I'm just saying, I'm saying like the other way around. Either yeah. way. I'm talking about way. like moms and people know who I'm talking about. Yeah. They go out with their daughters and they have Daisy pick Dukes up like on. 20 year olds, yes. you know, and yes. they think they still got it. Yes. If you're embarrassing well, yourself. Maybe you she, are, if she feels like it. she can do no, that, then no, maybe she it's does a bad still have that. You know what I'm talking about. The like college when they're bar, out at the clubs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, though. A lot of times, y'all don't even know who the mother and who the daughter oh, is. Oh, we can sometimes you know, I, I think now people time. look so good. Yeah. Botox is real. And literally, people look so much younger. Like, when you, we look at pictures of, like, when my mom and dad were, like, in their 20s, they look older than they do now. Yes. yes. You, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm talking, like, I'm not talking about, like, going to a nice life lounge with your daughter. I'm talking about Panama City. Yes. You're going out Florida with Panhandle. cowboy boots. Right. Shots and you of know fireball. what you're there for. Mom yeah. Jamie. Mechanical bull. See, stop. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> yes. Stop it. Yes. Yes. There's no, levels. It, it, no, it, 49 there's levels, to 19. But it's still Come the on. same thing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, I don't have the age yeah, thing. It's look more at the queen. like. Did you see the queen? Now look how old yeah, she looks. Everybody, <laughs> everybody looks younger now than they did they really like do. 20 years ago. My thing isn't so much about the age. It's about what's appropriate for certain events. Like last night I hosted a charity event and I came downstairs and my husband said that I looked like an oracle. Um, <laughs> and I just because the like dress you had that information, I put on, knowledge. Yeah, the dress that I put on before had like slits on the side and I was like, oh, that doesn't feel appropriate for this event. So then I put on something that covered everything and he's like, you need like a sun around your face. Yeah. You look like you've been sent from another that. planet to deliver a message. So yeah, I think you dress for how what makes you feel good, how you feel comfortable. But speaking of wardrobes, Whoopi is reflecting on the backlash she got for this look she wore to the Oscars in 1993. Now, she said everyone hated it, and the critical response hurt her feelings to the point where it kept her from dressing up for a very long time. Now, Jeff, can you relate? Because when we first met you on television, you didn't wear clothes at all. Yeah. <laughs> Does it feel weird? <laughs> you had that one in your pocket. You're away from it. <laughs> that was funny. dress so formally now? It does. It does. Yeah. Well, that was my house. So she's speaking of the Big Brother house. Yeah. That's what you do at home. You yeah. know what I mean? Hey, and it's look, hot and you're in the backyard. You jug of milk and just, hey, have at it. A jug of milk? Like, and you got some here. <laughs> Jeff was <laughs> pouring some milk. to get the people to take their clothes off. Yeah. Look, Jeff looked great, and so I would have taken my shirt off too. But honestly, <laughs> exactly. like, uh, Steph, I'm thinking about this Whoopi situation. Whoopi's a human being. Oh, and yeah. And for as much as they're like, you're a star, you should be able to take it. That doesn't mean anything. It hurts. Oh, man, I've worn some awful outfits, like atrocious. Like, I've got some really bad old modeling looks. Well, I didn't really pick it, but I wore it. That was my job. And I look back now and I'm like, what? Yeah. I don't even know what was going on. Thank God I got paid because it was a burn <laughs> to the soul. I well, think we all do, right? Yeah. Looking back. Whoopi got the last laugh because you'll notice she dresses however the heck she wants. She definitely does. Get it, Whoopi. Yeah. Now, coming up on DBL, <laughs> our interview with Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary. Does he regret passing up on any pitches from the show and five new events including flag football and cricket have been added to the summer olympics lineup are these olympic worthy sports There's always some small risk. You could say that about NBA and hockey and every sport that you don't want to I would, get I would, I would say it's I would say it's Like football, I don't know if there's a huge Because it's kind of like you're playing on seven on seven, like, you know, summer league. I, I've seen it, but, like, when you go up against Australia, like, yeah. you think those rugby players, like, they play over there, too. It's a very similar game, and I would but think you that would be our number one. But you can't have contact. We're talking yeah. about upcoming no football. There's no contact. I, I know, but how many injuries have we seen where it's just a cut? How many times do we know, see a player fall? you can say that about any sport. Yeah, I don't, I, yes, and that's why it's always a calculated risk and why we stopped sending our A-list uh, NBA players yeah, over for a while. And Durant's we saying he's absolutely going to play in the next Olympics. See, yeah, I'd want to so go. So because these B-listers just kind of lost the uh, 
the yeah. world champion. Just I think we're gonna see our best players right. next Olympics. Because I think it's cool. I think it's worth the risk to have a gold medal. I agree. I'm, I'm look. I'm I'm just saying like yeah, teams I know what would have mean. things in your in your claws about like no motorcycles. Didn't no any you know players have hurt themselves. Was that a rumor? It, or was it Michael Jordan really had in his contract that he couldn't play pickup basketball? I'm sure. I thought that I remember yeah, hearing that. He's super well, competitive. Yeah, you can't have a guy like that. That's your yeah. I thought that was in his contract. The, I could the be country's mistaken, economy but I remember was riding on him. He or he might have just said that, like, hey, Mike. No, it doesn't like, make no. sense. It, right? I yeah. remember yeah. hearing that. I don't know if it's true. Like Roethlisberger. Ro- Roethlisberger and uh, Jay Williams, the yeah. famous yeah. Duke yeah. point, yeah. point yeah. star. Yeah. Right. He right. was right. on yeah. his way to a Hall of Fame career. He hurt himself on a motorcycle, was out for two years, kind of came back, was never the that's same how, guy. That's, I forgot remember about that. Yes, yeah. motorcycles, anything. Uh, David Njoku last week, the Browns tight end. Uh, b- burned himself cooking. Yeah. Did you ever see the pictures yeah. of him? No, I heard it. It looks like he's wearing like Welcome back to DBL. The International Olympic Committee announced the five new sports that will be added to the 2028 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. They're meant to showcase iconic American sports to the world. They include baseball and softball, cricket, is that really an American sport? Lacrosse, squash, and believe it or not, flag football was also added. So what do you think of these new additions? Uh, I thought that was you for a second. Al, I was like, is that Al? Al like, getting it all? Like, oh, yeah, that's, I wish. <laughs> yeah, that, please. Yeah, the Erica. I, 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 I wasn't paying attention. I was Clearly. obviously looking. <laughs> there was something in your eye. I, I'll just say this really quickly. I think those are cool, but uh, some of the sports I don't think Americans understand the rules of. I can only speak for Cricket? myself. Squash. Cricket is huge, but not in America. Is it Globally, in- massive. It's one of the biggest sports in, like, Europe, in, like, in the oh god more so than everywhere. baseball huh oh, oh yes yeah, yeah, yeah. cricket really? cricket it's like massive. the the cricket final like between pakistan and uh, yeah. jamaica i think like a billion people oh, people watch it it's a billion, billion. A no, bill- it's it's, uh, yes. it's big they okay. went they <laughs> used to have an empire they were all over the world all right. yes well this topic mm-hmm. got us thinking about uh, thinking and it turns out that there have been a lot of strange and weird olympic sports over the past 127 years like tug of war which was one of <laughs> the original games there was also pistol dueling yes that's a way to uh win a medal okay or die that that feels dangerous uh croquet yes was an official olympic uh, sport in the 1900s how many drinks do you have to have to qualify for that (laughs) no one's ever played croquet sober it's so boring and there was also a swimming obstacle course that year you mean wipeout (laughs) (laughs) it's grown-up wipeout Poodle clipping was also once an <laughs> Olympic sport. Really? I okay. could, my dog needs a, a poodle clipping so badly, um, maybe we could make that an Olympic sport. So what was one, um, so uh, one-handed weightlifting. That's another one. Okay. I could, that's like world's strongest man or woman. I, I mean, bad. that's a big Cro- deal. CrossFit games. Yeah, I yeah. think that would be a cool yeah. thing. CrossFit games. Like I athletes think from all it has over. to be more than 10 pounds, though. And uh, more recently, breakdancing was added up, right? as a sport. Oh. And will be featured in next summer's games in Paris. Cool. I'm actually really excited about this. There was a guy who reached out to me um, who's doing a documentary on breakdancing. I mentioned that my uncle used to take me every Saturday morning to watch the guys on the corner breakdance. And it was highly competitive. Mm. Win a lot of money. Yes. Too. Yeah. All right. Um, ski ballet was also once an Olympic sport. Oh, yeah. I saw this. This is bonkers. I love it. I'm so here for it. So I've never many even broken seen bones and fabulous moves. It's like Do people get ice. hurt doing this? I'm sure. I'm I mean, sure. this is just so, too good to be true. I'm, I'll buy every ticket. I'd be there. And finally, race walking. 
Yeah, that's a real thing. That, yeah. No, that's super embarrassing. No. If that was my wife, <laughs> it, I would get a divorce. I don't like the way their legs move at the yeah, bottom. I like can't really look at thinking. that. I don't know. It's just it's really disturbing. Thinking. I don't like Imagine it. That's like running. If your neighbor comes over and like, yeah, I'm in the Olympics for walking. I'd be like, oh, that's so cool, Doug. And then as soon as he left, he'd be like, what a nerd. Yeah. Yes. Well, there was a woman <laughs> on Million Dollar List in New York, and she was a competitive race walker. Yeah. And she that's how we met her. It was it's, it's I a am curious thing. what constitutes a fast walk or a slow run. I know. At what point like, like where's what's the line? I'm, I'm sure that there is a it's line between one friend and none. <laughs> <laughs> sports that y'all think should be added like axe throwing now yeah. now we do axe throwing with booze because that's everywhere popping up all those petrifying axe. i think I, I think people will watch that what about darts why are these darts all in things europe that we do is, with a beer in hand darts in europe is huge this is worth so much money in europe this is massive it's it, not quite an olympic sport but it's up there people now, bet serious money on it it's huge. exciting on espn yeah. those yes. guys like nailed three bullseyes in a row yeah well i'm gonna say foosball foosball because i grew up with a foosball i do table. like it Killing it. And what about ballroom dancing? I, I think that could absolutely be a sport. Obviously not necessarily like this, but if you watch Strictly Come <laughs> Dancing or Dance with the Stars, yeah. they are real athletes. Yeah. This right absolutely. after speed walking. Yes. Well, we got into dancing with the stars. I think it could be a sport. We'll be right back. Tis the season for a holiday feast, and while there are a lot of great blogs, pages, and posts that offer up recipes, some just want you to heat up a hoax. So how do you spot these fake pages? Let's get the facts. Our source is Alex Hammerstone, Advisory Solutions Director at Trusted Sec, a cybersecurity company, and Scam Advisor, a website that helps point out scam websites. Hammerstone tells us that many of these pages are on social media like Facebook. When a page becomes popular and it has a lot of people that are sharing it, um, you know, has a lot of followers, a lot of interaction, people begin to trust that. Usually these posts will show a recipe and ask you to comment or share so they can gain more interaction, which puts their posts in front of more people. Scam Advisor says these pages will plagiarize from recipe blogs and use food images from the internet to drive traffic to shady blogs. The site itself can then, once it has an audience built up, be used to then distribute, you know, uh, malware or used for scamming or things like that. For example, this one named Old Fashioned Recipe claims to be located in Louisville, Kentucky. But if you look at the people who manage the site, they're actually in a foreign country, Morocco. Several reviews on this page also warn users that it's a spam site, saying that it's clickbait and doesn't bring you real recipes. These large sites like Facebook, you know, they have a lot of protections built in. Uh, you know, there's they have a lot of employees. They think about security a lot. And so keep in mind, scammers will always want to get you off of that platform. Now, not all recipe pages on social media are scam sites, but Hammerstone says to trust your gut, look at everything on the page before clicking on a link and read the reviews. And if something feels sketchy, don't click on it. With your Verify Fact Check, I'm Megan Bragg. Welcome back to DBL. Earlier, we spoke to Kevin O'Leary, who might be known as Mr. Wonderful, but he's gained a reputation for being hard on the dreams of building uh, budding entrepreneurs on Shark Tank. Take a look. Please <laughs> welcome back to DBL, Kevin O'Leary. Great to be here, thank you. What's up, man? Well, it's always a pleasure to have you. Now, Shark Tank's Halloween episode airs next Friday, so have you ever regretted biting too hard at someone's pitch? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. No. Well, that was a quick answer. <laughs> but has anyone you've scolded ever come back to prove you wrong? You know, the thing is, I'm the only shark that tells the truth. I mean, it, that, that shouldn't make <laughs> me the mean shark. I, I always find it disingenuous when, when Barbara or Lori says, oh, kumbaya, you keep doing what you're doing. I'm not going to give you any money because your idea sucks, <laughs> but I think you should just keep going on losing money and spending your, your hard-earned pay and wiping out your parents' mortgage. Like, that's nuts. I'd rather say your idea sucks <laughs> and you should try something else because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Get over it. He takes that very warm, fuzzy 
approach. I like, I like I prefer it. No, that. I, a lot yeah. of people yeah. prefer that. I want to get your opinion on this. I've been waiting all day. Donald Trump is in the middle of a civil trial for fraud, which could threaten his business empire, which a lot in New York. I'd love to know if Mr. Wonderful would call Donald Trump a good businessman. You know, I, I think the whole Trump situation is remarkable because it, it seems to be disconnected from the polls. No matter how many indictments this guy gets, mm. it doesn't seem to affect what's going on in his pop in, and how popular he is towards this next election cycle. There's never been a situation like this before. I've never seen anything like it. And, and I, don't, I don't, well, my question is what happens, and I have no idea what the outcome is going to be, but what happens if he does become president? Do they just stay all this litigation till his term is over? I mean, it's kind of a bad for the U.S. brand to throw the president in jail. I mean, I, 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 this is so crazy. I think everybody's got the same question. What is going on here? Because I would have assumed on the first set of indictments that that would have been the end of this run. Boy, was I ever wrong about that. I feel like pe people in this country get two messages. People tell you, be practical. Buy, buy within your means, but you also hear dream big, go for it. So in your opinion, which is more important? You know, here's what we've learned on 15 years of Shark Tank. We make deals each year, and let's say I do 15 deals. I'm sure that three or four of them are going to be just huge hits and the rest are going to be dogs five years later. The problem is I don't know which ones. Mm. And even though I think I do, I don't. Just take the first step. That's the whole point. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, get out there and do it. The outcome, I have no idea what's going to happen to you. If I invest in you, I want you to win, obviously, but you don't know either. It's just the craziest thing you know in other words it's not a destination it's a journey and once in a while I make a ton of money it pays for all the mistakes <laughs> that's the best kind of journey yeah. and the smile on his face says yeah. it all. all right out of the frying, frying pan into the fire we got some more hard-hitting questions Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift's relationship <laughs> has been plastered all over the tabloids but you're a marketing guy you enjoy a good marketing campaign in your opinion what impact of their relationship or what's the impact their relationship has on the US economy well, it, it definitely has, it has it has a huge impact on fanatic sales. I mean, Mike Rubin was a guest shark on Shark Tank. I started to understand his business. This kind of stuff drives T-shirt sales, drives hoodies, drives hats, you name it. And that's a big business. That's a multi-billion dollar business. Now, if Taylor Swift isn't the best marketer I've ever seen, I don't know who is. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, she just keeps milking it in every direction she can get mm -hmm. it. And remember, that's an all-income business. She's taxed at 52%, less 15% for her agents. So she's got to do a lot of tap dancing to make real money. Did we just hear Kevin O'Leary's a Swifty? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> it's going viral. Just kidding, Kevin. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> hey, us. Anybody who makes some money, he's a fan. Yeah, yeah, I think he sees the value there. DBL Nation, watch season 15 of Shark Tank. It is every Friday. And make sure to catch their Halloween special, shark -o -ween, next Friday on ABC. Kevin, thank you so much again. We will be right back. By the Appreciate way, I'm going to disclose on that show the truth. I'm coming out of the coffin. Yes, I am a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> you hear it here first. <laughs>a favor and come over and look at this. My sweet pups just snoozing the day away. I spend a lot of time thinking about them, but do they spend as much time thinking of me? That's the claim in viral posts on Instagram touting new research that supposedly proves dogs often dream of their owners. Let's verify. To dig into this one, we looked at some of the leading scientific research on the topic, and many of the claims cite an interview of Dr. Deidre Barrett, Harvard Medical School psychologist and People Magazine Online. Here's what she says, quote, humans dream about the same things they're interested in by day. There's no reason to think animals are any different. Since dogs are generally extremely attached to their human owners, it's likely your dog is dreaming of your face, your smell, and of pleasing or annoying you. But that's really just an educated guess. We weren't able to get a hold of Dr. Barrett for this story, but we did look into what else we know about dog dreams and spoke with Dr. Stanley Corrin, who's written books on the topic. Because we want to know as much as we can about our dogs and what they're thinking. 
It's not going to change the universe, but it helps us to understand. Research on rats has found the animals replay the events of their day in their dreams, and Dr. Corin says researchers agree this likely applies to dogs as well. He cites additional experiments that conclude dogs dream of very specific activities from their waking hours, pointing, digging, retrieving, for example. If you're not going to find any research study which says your dog is dreaming about Abby. There is research which shows that just like human beings, animals sort of replay events of the day uh, as part of their dreams. Then, in fact, you know, Abby's dogs can be dreaming about Abby. I mean, but it's, it's a leap of faith. So while we cannot verify that your dogs are dreaming about you, like the posts claim, since there's no data to back that up, we also can't verify they're not dreaming about you either. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. Halloween candy shopping might be more trick than treat this year. Let's connect the dots. The key ingredient to candy is, of course, sugar. Well, right now, there is a massive sugar shortage affecting some of the U.S.'s biggest sugar companies, putting a major strain on supply. So far, the jump from prices last year to this year is the biggest it's ever been in a one-year span. And right now, there is no sign that trend is going to change. And there's even more bad news for the chocolate lovers out there. Cocoa prices are going through the roof after supply chain issues and an ongoing drought. There is some good news though. Some of your favorite candy makers like Hershey say while candy may be more expensive this year, there should be plenty to go around through the holidays. And with that, he's connecting the dots. Welcome back. We all love a good DIY project, but there are some areas in your bathroom that could make your life a lot easier if you just let the professionals take care of it. We're talking about it in today's tips sponsored by Jacuzzi. First, plumbing. While changing fixtures are a little bit easier, when it comes to the actual pipes in your walls, don't even try it. Next, <laughs> ventilation. If you try things yourself, you could actually end up with mold in your bathroom if you make a mistake. And of course, always have a professional deal with your electrical system, okay? If you want to share your remodel, Jacuzzi can help you do that in the right way. Jacuzzi offers an unmatched, stress-free remodeling process. Visit JacuzziBathRemodel.com or call 1-800-990-6834. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got a guy. His name's Eric. Yes. Yes. Does it all. Eric comes every three weeks. Yeah. It's it's smart because I love DIY stuff and I love to build stuff, but there's some things like electricity. You get a little Never out touch it. Piping. You're going to make yourself more of a problem right. than you already have. Um, yeah. Yes. In my mind. Never touch electricity. Everything else, have at it, mess it up, learn from it. <laughs> <laughs> mess learn, it up, and, learn from and it. And then and pay twice as much yeah. to fix it. <laughs> that, that'll teach you the DBL lesson right there. new every day. We'll see you same time, same place on Monday. Have a great weekend.